one way to meet with your students either in real time or to deliver content to your students at a time when they can look it up and watch it in their own convenience is to use Zoom. So let's learn how to do that. The first thing that you're going to do is to go to download Zoom just by googling download Zoom and download the appropriate one for your computer. And then you're going to open the Zoom app. You're going to click on new meeting and you can just start with the video And there you are. Now you're going to have all of these options down at the bottom. These first two options over here at the bottom, you can mute yourself so you can't hear any more. Ah! You can stop your video and it's just going to have a profile picture of you. You click the invite button and the invite button is going to show you your invite codes. You can choose from your contacts or you can email. So you can set the email up in advance or you can copy the URL and then just po paste it wherever you need it to be or copy the full invitation and it's going to have a full length invitation that you can send out. And here is the meeting password if you would like to give that to people. I like to copy the URL and then just send that to my folks. Right now the meeting participants is just myself but if you have when you have more participants you can see the list of all the people that are here. I can mute everybody all at once, unmute everybody all at once. I had these more um, options here. I can choose to mute the participants on entry and that means as soon as they jump into the meeting they're going to be muted right when they get in. And sometimes that's a good option that way you don't have all the background noise and all the talking right when they get in and then you can allow them access as it's time for them to have access. access. Um, you can give them the option to unmute themselves or it may be a chance when you don't want them to unmute themselves. Um, I like to play this entrance and exit chime. That way I know when people have come in to or have left the meeting. Um, you can allow participants to rename themselves depending on what age of students you're working with. Um, you may not want to allow them to do this. It depends on who you're working with. You know you, your kids best. But a lot of times, depending on what device they're working on and if, whether or not they're logged in um, to Zoom, I've logged in through my Google account so when I click on stop video or I'm not showing my screen, um, you see my Google profile picture and so you know who it is. If they're logged into mom or dad's phone, it may say just Samsung Galaxy S4 or whatever their phone is or just iPhone or iPad. Um, and so you may want to go in and rename them the student's name. And sometimes it takes a long time to say, okay, who's on iPad? Well, there may be five people on iPad and so you don't know who it is. And so you may ask them to rename themselves with just their first name. Since we're dealing with students and a lot of them are under 13, we do want to take into account that we don't really want them using their full names um, while we're on uh, this online platform. So just a first name would be really, really great since we're seeing their faces um, in addition. You can, after all of your participants get in, click on lock meeting and that's not going to allow anybody else to join the meeting after we've started and that's a really great option for us to, um, to use. If you click on put participants in waiting room on entry, that's going to, when they click on enter the room, after you've given them the link. When they try to join the meeting, they're not going to pop into the meeting right away. They're going to get into a waiting room and you're going to get a little notification over here at the bottom that says so and so is in the waiting room and then you're going to click on it and say yes, I want them to get into the meeting. 
with us. And that way you get to kind of preview who's coming into the meeting with you and make sure it is one of your students. Make sure it wasn't just some random person that picked up your code somehow and wants to hop in and see you and your students because we don't want that to happen. We want to protect our students at all costs. Um, but like I said, once you get all of your uh, people here, then you can start doing that with all of those people. You have a chat box here as well. Let's close our participants. And with our chat box, you can chat to everyone. Uh, you can also choose right now, obviously, um, there's nobody here but me at this point. So I can, um, I would be able to choose who I chatted with. I needed to say something specifically to one child or to somebody else. I could say something to that one person privately. And um, if they need to ask me a question, they could message me privately and ask one specific question. And then if I need to answer that question for everybody, then I could just address everybody at once. Um, so using the chat function is really good. If you mute everybody, they can ask their questions in the chat box and then you can answer the questions out loud for everybody and it breaks down a lot of the chatter. You can choose to click record down here and that's going to record your session and then you can post it somewhere, maybe in your Google Classroom or you can email it to all your participants after the fact and that will help them to be able to go back and look at it or for those that maybe didn't get to, to join live and that will help them also. All right, sharing the screen is going to be a super helpful function. You can choose to um, to allow just one participant at a time, so you can share, or you could allow your students to share if they wanted to share their work back with you. Um, so when you click share screen, you can share what's on your desktop. You can share if you had tabs open. You could share via these other things, or you could share just a whiteboard. And maybe I needed to draw out and show you what it is that I'm talking about, right? And then if I needed to go back, um, I would just click stop share, and then I'm right back to me. Um, if I was going to go over to a tab, it's, you're going to notice that I still have this over here and I can still see everybody that's here and I can flip through my tabs and show them exactly what they need to see. And then I would just stop sharing my screen and then we're right back to the video chat. You have reactions down here in the bottom as well. They can give claps and they can give thumbs up. Okay, so you'll notice that now we have another participant. And he is waiting. So you can see he's waiting in the waiting room. So I can choose to admit him or I can choose to remove him. I'm going to admit him. He's here. All right. So he has chosen to have his screen off and it is showing us now that whoever sound is on is going to pop up and be going. So you can see that we have this option up here. Oh, we have somebody else entering. So it says Ansley has entered the waiting room for this meeting so I can see the participants. These two are in, this one is waiting. I'm going to click Admit. All right, and I can notice now, this one has the video off and this one is muted. I can click Gallery View and we'll be able to see, hi Ansley. So we see we can't hear her because she's muted. So you can see at the bottom here, she's muted. I can unmute her here. Yes. Say hi, Ansley. Hello. 
crazy. And then I could mute her here. And that way I can't hear all the background noise. Um, if I wanted to, I could mute everybody. Continue. But it did not mute myself. Or I could unmute everybody all at once. I'm going to go back to mute them all, but they still have the option to unmute themselves. Now I can also take on these three dot menus and I could pin this video spotlight. I could make them the host for a little bit and let them run the show. I could put them back in the waiting room. I can also rename them or send them straight to a chat. Um, for Alex is over here. If I didn't want him to say Alex's iPhone or maybe he put his last name on there, I could take and rename him. Let's just take off the iPhone and the, the apostrophe S. So now he's just Alex. Now we can also take back and change it to speaker view. And so speaker view, whatever's making the, uh, the most noise is going to be the speaker and it's going to pop big. I tend to prefer gallery view and then whoever's making the most noise is just going to be highlighted rather than just popping up constantly to um, show how one of the students could show their screen. So I'm going to allow Ansley to unmute herself and share her screen. So can you see this? Yes, we can see this. Okay. All right, so Ansley was able to share her screen. And when she's done sharing her screen, all she has to do is click the red stop share button. And we go right back to the gallery view that we were at. All right, we're ready to end our meeting. So everybody say goodbye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. When you're ready to end the meeting, you would tell all your participants goodbye. They would choose the leave meeting button that's at the bottom of their screen and you could choose end meeting and that's going to end it for everybody all at once.